Hello everyone and welcome to another News Coulomb video and another Ford Ranger electric update. So I just wanted to go ahead and update and say, you know, I've got uh, used Nissan Leaf cells. Uh, and I guess technically these are, are modules because there are actually four individual battery cells in here, uh, two linked in uh, series and then those two linked in parallel. Uh, so. I guess two pairs in series and so what ends up happening because this is a uh a lithium based chemistry with a nominal voltage of about 3.7 uh, volts per cell uh, it actually brings this up to a, a nominal voltage for this battery case of about 7.5 uh, volts and then of course the uh, the peak voltage for it is about 4.15 volt um, per cell uh, which means that you can charge these up to about 8.3 volts um, and these are interesting in that they came out of the first generation uh, Nissan LEAF. Now some people refer to these as uh, Gen 2 cells and the way you can tell the difference is uh, there's this split down the side um, and uh, the first generation uh, Nissan LEAF cells were more like spam cans uh, where there was actually no splitting at all. I believe uh, some of the Nissan LEAF experts can chime in on this. These were technically the lizard cells um, and I believe that it was AESC was the maker out in Tennessee of these cells um, but anyway these came out of a Nissan Leaf they're used uh, and I got a full set of 48 which is uh, 24 kilowatt hours at least when stock so I got these with the intention of using them to bring these Ford Rangers online and the reason for that is uh, the Nissan LEAF actually had a higher uh, battery pack voltage than what the Ford Rangers do. Uh, the Ford Rangers have a nominal voltage of about 320 volts, where the Nissan LEAF have a nominal voltage of closer to about 360. And what that means is where the Nissan LEAF had 48 of these cells in series, or these modules in series, I would actually only need somewhere between maybe 42 uh, and 44 of them at most uh, and maybe as, as few as 38 or 39 in series in order to provide a high enough voltage to actually uh, bring these Ford Rangers online and uh, yeah these batteries from factory are actually pretty awesome and uh, the reason for that is they're they're really designed for EV use which is is cool the dimensions aren't necessarily great in my opinion uh, you know it's about the size of a sheet of paper in terms of uh, the outside perimeter uh, and of course about an inch and a half thick uh, but you know outside of that they they already have the sense lead terminals built in for your battery management system uh, they accept a high amount of input and produce a high amount of output current uh, given the capacity of these cells uh, you know Nissan Leafs could charge at close to 50 kilowatts so uh, even even though there were only 24 kilowatt hours worth of batteries so that's a, basically a 2c rate uh, that they were able to charge at uh, so these are really high power um, decent energy it's a very good balance battery uh, for what it is right and so uh, I ended up picking them up part of it is they were cheap uh, they're second use batteries um, and uh, yeah I, I, I think they're they're a good option for some applications uh, but I'm actually going to just go ahead and spoiler alert I decided not to use them for the Ford Ranger Electric and I will explain that uh, decision making process in a later video but in the meantime I did want to just kind of talk about these cells uh, showcase them uh, like I said they're they're very cheap uh, they're they were at one point in time very easy to get uh, they seem to have all been bought up though and part of that I think is uh, just the ease of use, the size of the terminals. Uh, they, so they use a standard M6 screw head for both the positive and negative terminal. Uh, they use an M4, I believe it is, for the sense lead terminal. Uh, 
copper, you know, copper terminals, very clean, very easy to access. Like I said, they're very, they're very user friendly in that regard. They have four, uh, five sixteenth inch, uh, holes on each corner, one on each corner, uh, to use to compress these. What ends up happening with these, uh, modules is the outer shell of aluminum is actually fairly weak and it can't compress uh, the the pouch cells inside on its own so you need some additional support outside the way these were designed is not to actually operate independently uh, you need to provide an actual plate on the outside of them uh, which will you know you you tie together with threaded rod or whatever support you have to keep compression on them so that they don't expand too much uh, which will lead to additional degradation uh, they do need to be supported from factory and in you're going to hear me say this a lot. Uh, from factory, the specs on these are very impressive. It's 500 watt hours for this this little module here that only weighs about eight and a half, maybe nine pounds total. Uh, so that's a that's a really good energy density uh, and and actually volumetric volumetrically and gravimetrically that's a pretty decent energy density uh, for these batteries and like I said that's 500 watt hours 66 amp hours uh, from factory factory stock now the big problem with these and this is where I'll touch on this in in future videos is these are used batteries and they come out of a leaf that did not have active thermal management what does that mean? It means that those batteries degraded way faster than they had any right degrading. Uh, my Chevrolet Bolt EV has over 130,000 miles and less than 10% degradation. Let's just say that these batteries in coming out of Nissan Leafs that I know had less miles uh, degraded significantly more than that. So while on paper this is a good deal, uh, 500 watt hours of energy storage, uh, I don't think it's actually that good of a deal in terms of actual energy uh, and uh, so I think there are still some valid applications and I'll probably uh, do a series on these on these Nissan Leaf cells all on its own um, but uh, suffice to say that like I said I won't be using them uh, for the Ford Ranger electrics and I'll go into that specifically in another video uh, but I will say that I do think that these are actually really decent cells and they're a decent option uh, for some applications uh, but yeah so I just wanted to give an update uh, these are available uh, they, like I said they were widely available seem to have been sold out a bit um, but uh, otherwise yeah Nissan Leaf cells uh, very valid as an option especially if you want to just you know, dip your toe uh, in the waters of, of working with some of these uh, Second Life batteries or, or lithium batteries for, you know, a number of different applications. So anyway, I just wanted to share, uh, give that little bit of an update. I'd love to hear what you think. Have you had a chance to work with Nissan Leaf batteries before? Uh, what were your experiences? Uh, what do you want to know about them, right? Like uh, energy storage, power, applications, that sort of thing. And uh, as always, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel, and thank you for watching.